Okay, so anyways, I just got a cup of tea, but I um, have to talk. I can't wait. Um, it's almost noon. It's almost noon on Friday. I have no idea what's going on except for horrible storms. Like, I, sometimes I feel like that they interfere with the algorithm for sure to make sure, like, you can't see it. Because sometimes I'm so flooded with either the, sa I've, the same things I've seen over and over and over. This is billions of people. And I keep seeing the same things over and over and over or some strange random thing or all commercials. And so then it's like, okay, so they're doing something. And, um, oh, and this was wild because this morning I was answering comments and on here and, um, it was somebody had said, um, what did they say? Uh, I can't remember. They had said something, and so I had responded, but then I was like, oh, I should say, because I um, sometimes I just respond to, like, a part of the comment. I don't say something about the whole thing. And then I was like, oh, maybe I should say something else, too. So I went back in to say another comment. The other one disappeared. So then I did the other one, went out, went back in, disappeared. So they are removing them. They're removing likes, they're removing comments. They're not sending me notifications because all these uh, comments where I had not gotten any notifications. I just was I saw somebody else's. So I went in and was answering theirs and then there was some other ones. So I was answering theirs, but it was not letting me. So anyways, uh, uh, you know, they're interfering. So if you're trying to talk to me, you can always email me though because... Um, I don't know, probably interfered with too. What is it interfered with? I'm like on a rampage about that, I think. Um, hold on a second. Man, I'm trying to swallow. I was like. And did you notice, like I've noticed, is um, since I've been doing this like lymph movement, it isn't all stopped up in here anymore. It's like way more clear. And I just keep doing all that lymph no, lymph movement. But man, this used to be so clogged. Even where I was sure, like I was feeling worms crawling around. It feels so much more empty. So I'm going to keep doing it. And I'm going to keep doing that um, oregano oil. Because I do think whatever it does it is killing whatever bacteria is. Every time it tries to break out, it'll just keep, it keeps getting... Uh, attacked and then this one up here too that one went way faster but I can feel it keeps coming back but there's also still some other knots so then it's kind of like oh do I want to keep pushing them and if this is like some little encapsulated bacteria just leave it and then when they go in the med beds all that stuff will go out but anyways whatever happens is supposed to happen so whatever I'm dealing with is what I'm supposed to be dealing with and that's how it is for you know everybody um, I got my appointment yesterday. I'm so fuck, I'm excited. You know, it just was really blowing my mind too, was, um, that he thought about just the whole thing. Like I, there was like, there was more things I, all the time. Like I say, there's like all sorts of communication. I can't I tell you every little thing because I'm, I'm, I'm always in communication. So it's always just stuff. I don't know how to explain it. Like, I don't know what else uh, goes in other people's minds. Like, I don't know what else has got going on. But anyways, in the process of what I was going through, it was like they were showing me different things and were telling me different things. And this is before, before the appointment had ever come. And I was getting this strong message, like, that, um, you know, I was going to the right place, that he would think about it. And stuff, but it was like it wasn't all. It's like not a solid message. It's like I was getting this image of um, where I knew what was happening because it was like a doctor and a patient, and the doctor uh, was thinking more. He he was going more into it. He was like thinking about it, and you know, it's like going. It's like the doctors kind of have to do this, like get outside the box, and so. You know, they all have to get outside the box in their thinking because they are all so programmed. But so I was just like, wow, you know, that he did do that. And they had told me and showed me 
but then I was so caught up in my own emotional tornado. But see, you got to go through these processes of these emotional tornadoes when they come up. And it is wild how many fucking love and light people will come in. Oh, no. You are, you're just low vibration or you're pulling in low vibration and stuff like that. It's like, I, I don't know how they live. I don't know how they work with the, like, it's strange, but I was like, okay, so I pulled in the doctor thinking about it and calling me at home from his house. And I'm sure it's is still a business phone, but called me from his cell phone uh, or, um, I'm sure it wasn't his house phone. And his baby's there crying and stuff like he's at home calling me and talking to me about what I had talked to him about and that he had thought about it. He had been envisioning it. He had been thinking about it just like they told me, just like they were showing me that they were taking me to the right place. Like it was all going to fall into place. And so he, um, uh, you know, called me and told me and stuff. And so then when I was recording, you know, and I said I was getting a phone call from them. And so I went and answered it and she told me the price and stuff and told me how the, the, um, all that stuff. And I set the appointment and it was totally doable for the price. It's like, just take my house payment for the next couple of months and there it is. And so, you know, that's what I'm doing. Put my house payment to good, good, um, healthy things on me. And, um, so the, uh, um, Oh, and so, uh, the appointment. So when she was giving me an appointment, so the week before it was his first open date. And then it was like the day before my pay, uh, my second paycheck. And so then I was like, ah, I just feel like I should go to the next week. And he only has certain surgery days. So it just went to the next week. So I didn't take the first appointment that was available. I moved it to the second week and, or the next week. And, um, took that appointment and then there's a bunch of appointments that I got to still do. I got to go get this mammogram and that's in a couple of weeks and I've got to go, um, cause that's set now. I would got to go, uh, and then I have some like, they're going to do some of my appointments by zoom call. So I don't have to make the trek down there. And then, um, then the night of surgery, I'm going to go down and spend the night. And even somebody in my comments said that it was the best thing they ever did. It's like a 10 minute surgery. She did it on local anesthesia and it was so simple. And so, you know, she was just so happy. She said, you're going to be so happy. It's like, oh my God, I just can't wait. It's nine weeks. So I'm in the countdown to this, but, uh, she said it was like totally simple. And this guy listened, like he's shown like he is listening because even when I told him, like, I want to, uh, you know, have be sitting like and then tape them where I want them to stay. And so put tape across each boob and then uh, he'll take out the thing, but they'll still be held instead of them just flipping over and then being bound. So then holding them down and then use my mind to reattach the tissues and stuff. So this is, this is going to be so interesting to me, but, um, you know, he said that he would do that. I haven't explained the whole thing, what I'm doing, you know, but he is listening to me and stuff. So anyways, that is just such a plus. And it really uh, restored my faith into humanity. I swear, you know, like a doctor sit and listen and then to really think like, yeah, I'm doing things that don't have to be done. If somebody that doesn't want that done. And I, so I was looking through the chart today which all my stats are like super good. It's like, hell yeah, fuck yeah. Like there's times in my life, I wish they would have been this good when it was very unhealthy times in my life. And now it's like, hell yeah. And so then, um, but he did say a uh, brain injury of unknown origin. It's like doctors don't, they will not, they won't say malpractice. They won't say negligence, medical negligence. They, uh, it's like, I don't know if it's in their fucking, it's like they, they've got the same thing as like cops do of having their own little crew, you know, like protect each other. And, um, so he kept saying a brain injury of unknown origin or something. So I was thinking, I'm going to tell him, you know, it's, I, my brain was herniating. Like my brain was crushed, <laughs> like <laughs> crushed from the inside. <laughs> I've been in recovery for a while. It was not good. And uh, yeah, anybody had respect that I didn't want to go in and have the meds after I've had a, my brain hurt like that. No, like I just, even when I had first 
you know, because before I was all on this big healing thing, you know, I was still trying to live normal, go out with my friends and go have drinks and stuff. And I would just do weird shit. I was like whacked out. And it was like my brain could not handle alcohol. So yeah, I, and I don't want to do any kind of drugs anyways, because chemical, like, I don't know, the whole thing's bad. The whole thing's just bad. And, um, and again, you know, I do not think that plants are drugs. So even people who take the hallucinogenic plants and stuff like that, I still think that they're there for some sort of connection. They're, they're there, uh, you know, because it gets people to feel connected to themselves, to find themselves. So, but, you know, there's a bunch of plants. It's not just marijuana. The reason that they are so hard on marijuana is because of the hemp. The hemp was when in competition with paper, who Chase owned paper mills. And he didn't want the hemp, so he created a reefer madness situation. It's a whole thing. You can go look up about it. Unless they've, you know, dusted through that fucking history. But, yeah, it's a real thing. That he uh, went you know, all in on that plant. Because there's a lot of plants you can smoke that are relaxing or for pain or, like, clearing your lungs. So, there's a lot. And that they just, it's so wackadoo. It's like how they try and tell us, like, keep away from the plants. <laughs> They're so dangerous. But here, you know, slow up on these chemicals, like, for show. It's like, it makes no sense. But it, it only doesn't make sense when you start questioning reality. Until you question reality, it's just like, okay, well, that's what you do. Okay, well, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, well, they said to do those. And so then, you know, we just follow along. And it's so trippy, too, is how much you start really realizing how much is programming. Like that whole love and light thing, that is a program. People are running program. They could not be so fucking similar. I mean, and the way they all think they're so spiritual. It's like... I, I mean, it's strange because, you know, being spiritual is about being in a peace, being whole, being present, being yourself, being authentic, finding balance between your light and dark. It's becoming, you know, the all, not, you know, well, I'm going to hide from all these parts of myself. I'm going to pretend like they don't exist. And then so much, uh, there's those people have so much judgment too. Like they always come in and they always try and do it in this real like condes not condescending. It is, uh, it's kind of passive aggressive, but it's on this real like, oh, I'm just looking out for your best interest because, you know, you're just lost. It's just the same way with this Christian thing, you know. They just have no respect for other people's connection to self or to the universe or to their own belief system. And so they want to push theirs onto, you know, like I'm not going onto the love and light people's pages and going in the comments, hey, what are you doing here? Oh, you're not leaving, believing what I believe. I'm not going into Christian's pages and, ah, you guys are wacky. Like I'm not doing any of that shit. So when people come in and do it to me, I just think it's like, I, I don't know, it's like whatever. I I think that it's not like a little while ago, it was kind of like, well, it gives them an opportunity to hear what you think, doesn't it? So I guess so. Um, because yeah, I think that's wacky. I think you're hiding from part of yourself. You're in denial. You're an ego. There's a lot of stuff out of balance. You gotta find. You gotta see your whole self to put yourself in balance. You gotta. You gotta not just appreciate your dark side. You got to see that it has a purpose. There's a significance to it. But you gotta find. It's like you gotta. It's like you gotta clean the edges. You gotta find where you are, where you where you begin and where others begin, because there's so much enmeshment. There's so much in how, man, there keeps being something. Uh, there's so much enmeshment with people in it. They don't, they lose themselves. And so it's important to, it, it is a part of self-identity, you know, it's to really uh, understand yourself in the most um, clearest, compassionate way. And, and and to realize you know your darkness has a reason, it has purpose, 
And, and then when people are experiencing their own darkness, like, and then for people to come in and like shame you, like, oh, you need to hold that inside. Sister, no, it's coming out. <laughs> like, I'm not holding this inside for nobody. Like, I, I went around in life for a while holding shit inside. Get you pissed, get you angry, get you resentful, makes you hateful. It brings out a bad side in people. So, no, I'll stay with the cleansing my soul. When something comes up, I'll let it go. And, I'll, like, I'll be real about it. I'm not going to pretend, like, oh, and I'm just going to, like, and then, uh, you know, get off my recording and go start punching the wall or something. Like, no, I'm going to be real. <laughs> like, and if that offends you, then, you know, you nobody has to watch. You don't have to watch. So it's up to you, you know. Um, but, you know, I don't think that, you know, well, you can do whatever you want. Like, you feel like you need to come in and tell me how I need to behave, then there's parts of you that you need to see. Because nobody overrides anybody else. And so we all have freedom of choice. Well, we have uh, freedom of running a program. <laughs> like, because that's what we have. A lot of people just run in programs. But it's to break through the programs. That's the reprogramming yourself is to let go of the programs to realize what you're doing. Realize that you're not you're not um, thinking it through. You're not processing it right. You're not going big enough. Like There's a whole bunch of different things. It could be all, you know, an assortment. So, I don't know. Oh, and the cat's out of the bag on the house. So, <laughs> like... Um, my neighbor messaged me a little while ago and said, oh my gosh, somebody's house is in foreclosure. Um, is it you? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's me. And nobody understands. But I did tell my daughter, because somebody posted a, a, a TikTok this morning. And I was like, oh yeah, see, this is the whole point. This is what I was trying to do. And um, so I um, went to the store and on the way home, I kept thinking about it. So I was like, I got to tell my daughter this. So um, what it was, was this lady did this TikTok. And I didn't see the whole thing. But on the first part of it, she said that right now they are, have so many foreclosures that they're just flooded with foreclosures. They foreclosed on so many people that it's just flooded the system. Which that, see, that's their own demise. That's their own takedown. And so, you know, it was making me so happy. But... You know, sometimes I really am in my own head, like really in my own head, like oh, that world is real, real. And so that, um, uh, so then when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so exciting. It's so cool. And I kept thinking about it. I was thinking, you know, like if my kids could understand like what I was trying to do, like flood the system and then here it is, it's flooded. And, you know, I said that it was when the they're in the Florida one of their storms like I don't even remember which one. There's been so many. There's so many devastating storms all the time. But they do this shit on purpose so that they can destroy people's houses and insurance doesn't pay. They can take away land. They can. Um, it is all about trying to create this place where you know none of us have anything, and so they do it at their rate. They're, they're driving at their speed. They're doing what they want. And so that's why, you know, I decided I'm going to come in the side door and I'm going to be a part of the flood. Like, you're going to take all these homes away from people who have nothing, like, and have families. And they're taking people's homes and stuff. And so then I was like, fuck that. Um, you know, I'm going to stop paying them. I'm not going to pay to fucking fund this. This is some bullshit. And then it was like, you know, well, you can lose your place, but at least you're losing it for something you stand for and, you know, not being a part. And then, you know, throughout all this, you keep seeing all these people like stop paying taxes because they're doing bad things with taxes. Stop paying Starbucks because they're paying this. Stop paying the Kellogg's because they're doing like all these different people. But that's what I was doing was trying to stop paying the bankers because they're fucking everybody. And yeah, you're at risk for losing. But what am I losing? Like, I would rather, you know, I mean, losing a house is losing. I mean, this isn't the first, my first go around. So they've already uh, cleansed me of that. 
And so I already know, like, oh, you just pick up the pieces. You just move on. You just get someplace different. And then, you know, it's usually an upgrade. So um, you just keep going, you know. It, that's what the universe, that's like what the game is, you know. It's, you're playing their game when you play by their rules. When you start tuning in to the universe, they are telling you different stuff. And, you know, just like this stuff with this doctor and stuff, like, and all the things always just makes me more and more like, wow, it makes you more fine tune your communication, more understand your communication. And that is what it's all about is getting into tune with this communication because then you're going through life at a very different rate, a very different pace. You are, you know, managing yourself and uh, it's just different. It's just different. And the more that you listen, you know, and I, how much, like, because there, there was other things, too. Because even, you know, like I said, when I was home and I was um, really processing a lot of stuff, like, uh, you know, I'm sure it's like guilt, resentment. Like, there's a lot of stuff that comes up. And like I said, you have stuff that is coming up from past lives but they use scenarios in this one to bring up the stuff that is pinned up from other ones. And so, you know, whatever the push is, it's bringing up a lot of stuff that is hot, hidden away inside of you. Energetically, it's tucked in. And so you, um, and so then it gets provoked and then it comes to the surface and you see it. You don't stuff it back in. You don't hide from it. You don't run and get drunk. You don't. You know, you don't just go buy donuts. You don't get ice cream. You don't go buy a six pack. No, you face it. You process it. And it takes you kind of like, it takes you kind of like a, through a memory. Like, let's look through a photo book. Remember when this happened? Remember when this happened? And it's kind of like you're just going through these different scenarios and remembering remembering different people and influences and what got you to make the decisions you make and why you are where you are like all the different things and so you go through that process you don't turn that process off you don't hide from that process you go through it you feel it you face yourself you face the parts of you that need to come up to the surface and come out and then um because I feel fine. I feel fine. Like, uh, you know, I, by the next morning, I was feeling fine. Like, I was, like, over it. Like I said, I already was like, okay, well, I'm just going to have to come. You know, I went in and tried all my dresses on. Okay. Is it really, is it, you know, okay, you can you can deal with it. Like, I, I don't like, you know, like all that. And um, so, anyways, uh, so there was, like, some dresses. And I was like, uh that I like, but then it was like, well, I'll like them a lot better when there's not so much of this. And so then it was like, well, if I'm going to be stuck with all this, maybe I just want to just not keep these dresses. And, um, so I went in and dried them all, you know, trying on these ones. And then, um, that's when I was like, oh, it's fine. I'll be fine. Everything's fine. You know, don't be out at some point. I'll be, uh, it's fine. You know, you just go through this process and it gets you to where you release this stuff. You're not hiding from it. You're not pretending. You're not, you actually release it. So you actually feel better. It's actually like, yeah, like, like I already knew I was insecure. All right. And I, you know, and there's a lot of stuff, like a lot of stuff comes up. And it's like, yeah, I was super insecure. I was very, um, uh, you know, I, and I, I mean, and you know, and it, even when you say that, like, you can get like, fuck, it's like a whole fucking fast, like a stack of cards brrr, of all the reasons that fed that insecurity. Like the things you feel are real and they really happen. They really got you to where you are. Like it's not, you're just not crazy. You didn't just become the way you are just for no reason. No, you went through things and you responded in the way that you know how to respond and you and it, and the thing is is that is what everything is about it's just all about this learning and growing it's not like you can do a wrong or anything there is no wrong or right way there's about a zillion different ways you can do everything and everything has different uh outcomes different playouts 
you know, everything has different. So it is like, it's, and it's meant to be that way. It's meant to be all so many different things. Like I heard somebody say, um, I don't remember who it was. Cause I, um, you know, I've said like how the solar system is like a giant body. It's like, we're in it. Like, it's the same as how our bodies work. It's like, it's a giant body of energy and we are the cells. We are the, what makes it what it is. And, um, and I had just heard somebody saying something like that only they were saying, um, is a mind. And I think I've heard other people say that, but just like the universe is just like a, not a whole body, but a whole, just like a giant mind. But the way I see it though, is kind of like the way our body works, like how it has like organs and synapses and it's like a whole domino system that goes through and I see um our brain has it too but our in our whole body see we have like um these filtering systems and I that's how I look at like the different vibrations of different groups of beings and stuff it's like a filtration system of energy and so anyways, I, I just look at it as kind of like, it's more like a, like a whole body. Like we are the representation of what is, you know what I'm saying? Like, so that we can have an understanding of what we are, but they keep people so confused by keeping them so stuck in the three dimensional plane of uh, existence in their thought. And, um, and that is a very dependent space to be in. Because it is uh, controlled. Like, I don't know if every single three-dimensional place is as controlled as this one or is as dark as this one, you know. There's lots of different realities. And, you, you know, uh, people don't realize, like, even in a reality is a jungle. And the snails and the little bugs and all that stuff, that's a reality. That is souls having an experience in different sizes and shapes and existences. It's all the same. It's all just realities and realms of experience. It's not the same way as how people look at it. It's so three-dimensional. They look at everything through three-dimensional thought process, but really it's it's a lot more of a, a vague existence of the mind of what we are and how we exist. And so it is kind of you, you having your own Everything is about you being able to see yourself and feel yourself and witness yourself and feel and exist. And so that's what it all is. And, you know, I don't know why humans think like all existence must be about being human because it's, I mean, Stella is going through all this ascension and growing and stuff. Like, I'm amazed by her. So amazed. And, um, I mean, this has been really fantastic. To be able to go through this experience and be able to be so close to her, like a different species of an animal and figure out like ways to communicate and ways of expression, all sorts of stuff, you know, ways that she understands and, um, you know, I, and she works so hard on uh, getting me to understand. Oh and my gosh, yesterday she was wild. I couldn't believe it. Oh, hold on a minute. She was, um, she kept going outside and she was running and running around all over the place, barking. Like she was just really feeling so excited. And then she kind of came in and was kind of whiny. And then I reminded her, I said, it's just like, you just had a hard workout. It's all fine. You're fine. And then she just was like, and then she just laid down her head went to sleep. She's been sleeping a lot. She had another cyst rupture. Man, I keep telling her to stop drinking the water outside. She always goes and finds water outside. She doesn't care. And so I keep feeling like it's just a lot of bacteria or something. You know, there's no telling what all is in the fucking water. And so, um, anyways, I feel like, though, that she's doing good. I feel like she's doing good. And it's for sure, you know, part of the ascension, part of her development. Because we're all souls in development. And we are all souls that help one another. Like there could be souls that are in an animal that are far, far advanced, 
than souls that are in a human. Like, seriously, I just saw that. <laughs> like, <laughs> they can be. There can be some that are, like, way advanced. And they're there teaching hard, big lessons. Sometimes some of the hardest lessons is your own behavior. So somebody's own behavior of how they treat an animal. And they, they don't see that side of themselves until they see it. And then once they see it, you can't unsee it. But see, that's why you got to face your, these dark sides of yourself. But, you know, there's like horrible, uh, abusive, you know, animal abuse stuff. But uh, a lot of the animals that are being abused are high, higher souls that are teaching the lessons, if you see what I'm saying. And so... Uh, because you got to remember, even though as so much of this stuff is just like so, oh my gosh, so outrageous, so crazy to us. But it is in the story. It's just part of the story. It's part of the movie. Because when you go out of this, then you know that this isn't real. So what happens here doesn't have the same impact. It's not like you're, you know, like, oh, I wouldn't want that to happen. Because it's like, well, it's not real not real it's not really happening so everything is you know just unreal and um but now like the neighbor I I told her you know and I told her you know like um because she's like oh I bet you're so stressed it is stressful like you know I keep thinking like well I could just pull up and start evicting or whatever but I keep thinking well this is what you know I was led to do was to flood the system and so I'm just going to see how it plays out. Like, right now, they are being flooded. They are, you know, trying to fuck so many people over. And so, um, and it's like right on the, uh, the the cusp of the, it's going to be the collapse. Like, all these foreclosures is going to be the collapse. And it's, it's a part of it. And so, um, and it, see, it's like so right on the edge. It's like we're right there. And that is, to me, like, everything. Like, we're right there. We're right at this turning point. We're right at this this point of uh, making all these big changes. And so, it is, um, you know, I'm trying to not worry about it. And then, plus, the way that all these appointments and stuff, and uh, the way all that worked out, and that's nine weeks. And I, I really can't imagine the bank uh, making it nine weeks. But I'm going to pay ahead. I'm going to get the, the whole thing paid as fast as I can off of my checks. I'm just going to send in a big chunk and so that I'm paid. So no matter what goes down with them, the bank and stuff, so then I can still get my surgery, you know. So anyways, that's my plan is to get that shit paid as fast as possible. And then, um, and then you know, I'm still owed my surgeries because whatever is going to go like I don't know that the medical is going to fall as fast as the uh, banks like the, the, I don't know how it's all going to play out like they're all they could try and keep things going there's this whole big thing going around the eclipse now in some areas the closing down school all sorts of shit it's like to the point where I was like okay are they trying to make this into a big thing to try and get people to be scared and they're telling people to get food and all this stuff. Kind of reminds me of like what was that? It was um, it was back when they said that the, I think it was two thousand when it was going to change from nineteen ninety nine to two thousand, and uh, uh, they called it something. And they said it was going to just shut down the whole world. The whole world was going to fall apart. We were probably all going to die because the computers were not going to be able to figure this out. <laughs> it was like it was so. <laughs> It was like it, it, this whole big lead in too. It was like so ridiculous. Like people were freaking out. No shit. It was wild. And so I keep feeling like, are they doing this again? Because it seems like it. Because I mean, I don't know. I mean, shit could go down. I mean, shit's gonna go down. There's gonna be shit going down. We got a lot of shit that's gonna go down. I mean, we're in the shit. We're in the time. We're in the period. We're in the collapse. We're in the time of change. We're in the time of transition. So, yeah, everything that was them is going to be collapsing. It's going to be falling apart. And there's a lot of people that are dependent on them. And it's going to hurt. But, you know, when I said, you know, for a few years now, that you got to let go. You got to let go of everything that holds you to this place. 
Otherwise, it's going to hurt when it falls apart. And, you know, it's just the way it is. Hold on. So, you know, it is, um, it is what it is. Uh, but look at my hair, man. I, uh, was just in there uh, well, every time, every, I swear to God, every time I go in the bathroom, then, um, uh, you know, when I see my hair in the mirror that, uh, it looks like it's more blended in, like you barely can see it. It's getting more and more blended. Oh, and there's this guy on my TikTok and, um, like, cause I have all these people that talk to me about, uh, the gray hair and the copper and stuff like that. And this guy, he was talking to me a bunch of times and, um, he was telling me about his beard and he, I think he was taking copper and it wasn't changing. And, uh, I think that the copper they put into supplements is not uh, enough or right or something. And so I said, well, you should try the cup because, um, and just see, see what happens. Because we were just having this conversation, you know, like, well, what do you think? I was like, I don't know. I would try it though. I would just try and see. And so anyways, then, um, uh, some of the people, when I've been talking to them so much, I'll see their name. And so then I'll start recognizing their name. So then their videos will pop up. So he does videos and he is so funny. <laughs> so then I started seeing him and I was like, oh, okay. So now I see your beard. But today his beard was darker. I told him. And then he's always just silly because he's always like, yeah, Benjamin, something, I don't know. We got Benjamin buttons or something, but he, um, but yeah, his beard it is like, it was so much blacker. And, uh, and then another girl who I talked to a lot, she had been asking me and she also has videos that she does. And I saw her video the other day. And so I said, your hair looks darker for sure. And she said, I think so too. It's like, and that's fast. Like, I'm telling you, in a matter of weeks, in a matter of weeks, you start seeing a difference. And somebody else was talking to me about, they have some sort of melanin disorder. And if copper increases melanin, if that would cause them to be like in an overload or something. But the weird thing is, is how our body works is it will try and make more when it, it when you give it something, then it won't go into this kind of state. It can calm down and relax. So sometimes giving it what it's trying to create for itself is exactly what you need to do. So, but this is where everybody has to be like going at it at your own experiment. Like don't just go all in. Well, I'm just going all in. I'm doing all these. No, go slow. Go at your own rate. See like, okay. You know, Cause like I've been doing this for a long fucking time and people like they want to jump in and they want quick results. Like, um, in a, you, you know, and I don't know. I mean, there's people who probably haven't done all the detoxing and stuff like uh, those people who I'm talking about, I'm pretty sure that they're all on detoxing and all that stuff and, uh, or making those kind of changes in their lifestyle. So, um, but you know, some of the people who aren't doing that, you know, and there are lots and lots of girls, uh, and young girls too come in and they're just like, you know, uh, want to know how do I have this hair? And like, why is your hair, uh, like thick and healthy and color and stuff? My hair is, um, like they all are having, uh, their hair is falling out. They're, um, all sorts of stuff, you know? And, and I think that there's several different reasons. Last night I had an epiphany as I was getting out these pillows and, um, I've spent, I've, I've been a pillow freak for a long time because of my scoliosis. Like I've said before, my turn, my, my S curve, my, my S goes in my back, which I've been working and working on, you know, straightening it with my mind, but my S curve goes in my back. But when it curves back, cause it makes an S when it curves back, it's all in my neck. So my neck has been. Jack, that's what got me all on the meds to begin with. And so the, um, so I've gone through so many different kinds of pillows trying to find something that's comfortable. And, um, so like right now I have a couple of these, I can't think of what they're called, but this real mushy and they make all these beds out of it. Like in the, when they were making the beds out of it, they were super expensive 
And even when um, here where I was saying like I felt like they were turning up the frequency and stuff. And then I would go lay on my bed and I was like, I, I swear to God, the fibers are coming to life. The fibers are like all agitated and, and it was uncomfortable. And so I was like, I think the frequency affects these fibers and stuff. And uh, so anyways, that was, um, you know, part of like why I think that they've made all these artificial kind of mattressy things and stuff. But I had seen also where people were talking about combs. Like, so you should be getting either a wood comb or um, it's either wood or something else. Uh, because plastic is creating static electricity and it's damaging the follicle and it's making people's hair fall out. And so that is a thing. And so then um, on the pillows. So I was laying there last night and... Um, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, all these pillows, all these expensive ass pillows that are made out of this stuff that people are sleeping on, rubbing their heads back and forth on that static electricity. If static electricity and a comb is making people's hair fall out, these motherfucking pillows have got to be making people's hair fall out. So if your hair is falling out, like you got to really be thinking about the environment. Like what is your environment? Uh, you know, and I think it is that we need to get back to like real basics down feathers and cotton uh, you know cotton and linen and wool but wool is so itchy but cotton and linen are high fiber um high vibration fibers because they're natural everything what they make with petroleum and plastics and stuff is an unnatural fiber and so that's why there's these different reactions and why it seems to irritate the fibers and so, and I'm, I bet you it's giving all sorts of things like skin issues and all sorts of stuff. And, um, but anyways, you know, it's all stuff that we have to pay attention to our bodies, pay attention to our environment and then make changes and stuff. But see, that's where we got to be more systematic and paying attention and trying different things and willing to try different things. Like you've been a fucking lab factory for these people. Then, you know, with chemicals and stuff. So when you start changing over and trying, you know, to add in minerals and stuff and copper, like people get so scared. They get so scared of natural stuff. It's like, well, I don't want to overdose on copper. I don't think you can overdose on copper. The thing that happens is that your water, if you leave it sitting in in copper, the water will become so in, in, uh, so enriched with this copper that it's too much. You, you will feel nauseous. You will feel like it will give you a headache. But you can't overdose on it. It is like it just is um, like, like you can't. I don't think you can take in too much. And another thing too I've noticed. Because at first I was noticing that my pee smelled like minerals. It doesn't now. That seemed to, to kind of go out. But now it's yellow. It's not like a bright, bright yellow. But my pee has been like white for so long. So long. I, you know, and I always thought, you know, I'm, and I was always told by the doctor, well, I'm so well hydrated. I drink a lot of water. And so I, um, my body's super hydrated. And so my pee is white. And so now my pee is yellow and I drink a ton of water, drink tons of tea and everything. And, um, I think it's minerals. I think it is like I don't know. Just like when I was a little kid, how the sun used to be a different color. Like, I don't know. It's just something to think about. But so anyways, pay attention to your own body, you know, and, and then you got to pay attention even to the water. And uh, it might be even better if you have to go buy bottled water to buy distilled. Because, um, you know, I've seen where some people say they put distilled water in their copper cups to drink from. But, um, it might have a better process too, where it's not, doesn't have so much poison in it or something. Cause they fuck with all the fucking water. And so, uh, you know, and getting good water for yourself is important. And uh, so I was just thinking about it here, the water bullshit. Cause when I had just gone to the store, the big sign out there, cause they were trying to get us to all fill out some kind of census on how much we make and all this stuff. And I'm like, fuck them. Fuck the fuck all this fucking bullshit with this fucking system and then wanting to fucking know. It's not your goddamn business. 
how they all think that they can be up in our fucking business about every motherfucking thing. It's like, no, it's none ya, none ya. That's what I got to say about it. <laughs> so fuck off. So anyways, um, uh, so I don't know. It seems like they kind of are planning to do something. Like I, if, if there's going to be some place, I would say, uh, you know, there could be some shit that will happen somewhere. And then maybe they will make it like all the electricity go down or something. And you know what is going to, uh, where I'm really going to have a hard time. <laughs> I was just thinking about this today. Because um, the other night when the uh, the uh, internet went out and the TV, the ocean waves went off. And it's just like wide awake. Like, oh God, the silence. And every time when the power goes out, it's like the silence. It's deafening. It's like, oh God. I have used white noise to sleep for fucking, oh my God. I, since I was young, I I don't, I mean, I think so many people start doing that. And people like will watch TV, like they'll do something to distract their mind or something while they're sleeping. But white noise, I don't know, it, it works good for me. And so, anyways, then I was like, oh, my God, if they do take down the power for a couple weeks, I won't get any sleep. Well, I won't have to be recording, though, because, well, I think I'll still probably, re well, I wouldn't be able to really record because it'd be dark as fuck. You wouldn't be able to see. So, what, I don't know. I probably will record something to just kind of uh, log in, you know, the experience uh, you know, like this is the diary of the experience of the awakening and the transformation of mankind. But, um, so, uh, I was like, man, I'm not gonna get any sleep when that goes down. If they really do turn off the power, or hopefully it is just a couple of days and not for fucking weeks. Because on this thing, what they're saying about this, this big ordeal that they're creating around the eclipse they're saying uh, uh, for have food for a couple weeks. Be ready. And, uh, and one thing too is I think uh, do pe I don't know what people think that through all the way and think like, well, if there's no power, what are you going to cook? And everything that you filled your fridge with is going to go rotten. And so, you know, do you have a grill? Are you ready to cook out there? Do you have stuff that you can grill? Are you cuz you need to have stuff that you don't have to cook. Or stuff that is just like, you know, an Instapot where you can just plug it in. Like, uh, you can, if you have a generator, you can plug it right into the generator. So, I don't know, but I, I, I don't know. Like, it's all going to play out the way it's supposed to play out. Everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. You're always going to do what you're going to do. And then you can spend all your time overthinking it and stressing out and wondering what you're going to do. But you're always going to do what you're going to do. The more you can just be like, well, I know I'm going to do this. I'm just going to do it and not be um, stressing yourself. Because those kinds of things like um, this morning when I left and I was like, okay, so do I go, go get water first or do I go down to the store first? Because it's two different directions. And so then I was like, well, you're always going to do what you're going to do. So why didn't you think about it? I was like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to the store first. Because I always would do that anyways. I would always go that way and then circle back and go, like, I circle around like that. And so, it was like, why would I even overthink it? Just go and don't even think about it. And then, when I start going, I felt like, I sometimes when I'm driving, I totally feel like I'm in a spaceship. <laughs> I have so many things that I think people would think are so weird. But I totally will feel like I'm in a spaceship. Like, I feel like I've been in spaceships. When you start going and you just focus on the going and, um, and then I never, my mind never stays there. Like I sometimes like, uh, like, I don't know how to explain it. You either know what it's like or don't like it. that same kind of thing. is like where you get somewhere and you're like, how did I even get here? Why well, I, I am aware while I'm going, but I'm just talking and, and then I have this trust and knowing that nothing can happen that's not supposed to happen. I'm not going to get in a wreck unless I'm meant to get into a wreck. The only wrecks that are going to happen are the ones that are meant to collide. You, you just don't have them happen just because. They, like, like you can be driving and 
that you're about to mess up, the universe just swerves you back. And you're just like, whoa, you know, so they've got you all the time, but you got to get into that kind of that trust fall. Like I'm saying, you got to get into that, like trusting and not into this kind of way that they get people to think like you have control over things. Like you can make things change. You, you can, uh, anything can happen at any time and stuff like that. No, anything. The only thing that can happen to you is what's meant to happen to you. You signed up for it before you ever came in. And so that is the only thing that can happen to you. Nothing can change that. And everything is said. Like, everything is created. We're just, like, in this replay. It's like a slowed-down version so you can really get the full effect of the experience. It's not just an instantaneous thought. Instead, you are in the experience so that you can really see yourself and feel and feel what does it feel like to, you know, whatever your experience is. Because everybody has different experiences based on like their roles or whatever. And I saw this video. I always thought this was the coolest shit. And this teacher, she's in Dallas. And um, and that's where I went to school. That's when they did the, um, what did they call that? Desegregation. Where they did the busing with the black kids from downtown. And then the suburb kids, which were primarily white kids. And so they divided it in half and then they took half from the schools and merged it supposedly i didn't ever know any of the kids that went downtown to go to school but i guess it was some but oh, there was tons like our school became half black then and um you know and it was uh, it was fine all the kids were um great like we all became friends but um but anyway so i had awareness of the texas schooling system and um, the bullshit, like, oh, you can't put money into their school, so you're just going to play these games and stuff. And, and then cause all this chaos with all the parents who were, like, freaking out. But anyways, the, um, but so this lady, she's in the Dallas school, and she has, a, I, I don't know if it's a private school or what. She's on TikTok, and she's becoming, like, famous, this famous teacher. She's been on Jennifer Hudson's show. And, um, she's got like Southwest has donated stuff like, because she, she's so cool. Her videos like make you cry. They're so cool. So she's got these little kids, like first, second graders. And, um, I think her class is first graders. And then there's kindergartners. So that's why I'm not sure. Cause when she gets a whole bunch, like all the first grade class is pretty big. So it seems like a pretty big school, but she's doing just the coolest shit. Uh, so she, um, she does more of like hands-on learning, not just sit and tell them. So she wants to teach them about Mexico or Nigeria. I've seen both of these videos. So she, uh, teaches them about how to go get a passport. So they have a whole thing set up. They do a whole play out. Let's go get our passports and teaches them how to do that. Teaches them how to, um, go through the airport and teaches them how to, uh, just the whole thing, the whole thing for starting your trip. And so she has them all pack their bags. They come uh, for, for their trips and she has their whole room set up like an airplane. She even goes around with the stewardess with the little cart, giving them stuff. She has this big screen in the front that is an airplane ride. It's like 10 minute airplane ride and they go through all of that and then they get off and then they go and learn stuff about the place. They get to go have a big meal that is all their food. They have, um, they get to go into like a room and pick um, souvenirs that are all stuff from the um, that place. You know, like a, some of them I saw like their flag or whatever. They get to um, all sorts of stuff. And I was like, this is where kids learn. This is where kids and all these kids are so happy. And it's just the coolest thing. And so, anyway, she's gotten a lot of positive attention. And I had sent a video to my daughter of one of her things this morning. And she was just like, oh, my gosh, she's in love with this. And so, she was watching all the videos, sending them to me. I was like, oh, my gosh, they just made me cry. But um, I was like, this woman's making waves. And that's the thing. It's like there's ripples and there's waves. And this woman is making waves. But all the ripples matter. Everything you do. 
that makes changes matters. Everything that everyone does, those are the changes. Like no matter what they are, even if you feel like it's not, it's insignificant, it's no big deal. It ripples out. It ripples out, but there is going to be some big splashing. There's going to be some big waves, big waves of change that are going to come in. And it is going to be just like that, you know, like people you don't see coming, like the, the teacher and like the woman who did the whole big series about who did I marry? She got deals and stuff off that. She's been on uh, uh, interviews and stuff. Uh, so she got a lot of uh, attention off of that. And I don't even know, like, I don't know if they're making a movie or what the hell is going on, but like, she definitely made a big wave. She, she caused a splash. She really got people talking and thinking about things. And one thing that was so cool with her is that she was willing to call herself out, humble herself. And so that, you see right there, that is a change that, so then it makes people see that, feel that, the safety of it, like it, that's the creation of it. Just like how talking to that doctor, you know, I had the vision, I could, I had the vision because I knew what I wanted and I had been watching about it because the universe brought it to me. So that's how I knew, but I had the vision of what I wanted. And so I took my vision to him. He was resistant because he has his own plot. You know, they all have their own thing. The en blanc at the surgical suites and all that business, you know, they're all a little fancy. And so, uh, then him listening, which I was impressed that he listened. He could even repeat stuff back and said, you know, I was listening. And um, so listening, seeing my vision, and then allowing himself to create his own vision, to go in and play out the surgery in his mind and really look at it through different eyes of, you know, how would that work? Could I do that? Could I, couldn't, and you know, and it just makes sense when you start thinking about like, really, why do you need to sew something down that's going to be held down by binding? Like it should go back to itself automatically. And then my plan about, um, taping them across. So then when they're bound, they are sitting, you know, in a certain position. So then in my mind, I can start going in and putting those uh, tissues back together and then hopefully by the time they come off like uh, you know that they have listened <laughs> we'll see well I mean not everybody will see I'll see and then I'll report back <laughs> so but I'm going to give it some time too because all this stuff does take time and that's where people have got to get into the thing like you can't rush it this is your lifestyle you're changing your lifestyle you're going towards health you're going towards independence. You're going towards taking care of yourself and trusting yourself. Like go in and try some different things. Like cooking out of cast iron, important. And it uh, gives you iron into the stuff. Like right now I've um, got some um, roll, rolls I was making. I'm raising and I'm uh, they're sitting in the cast iron. And then I'll cook them in the cast iron. So, you know, it will give minerals. And so that... And putting in mineral salts. They are full of minerals, but they're expensive. You know, it's just salt, but the salt that they want us to eat is poisonous. So you got to spend a lot to get better salt and better salt is real minerals. And so uh, minerals like that, getting a copper cup and just drinking out of a copper cup. It's not like a big stretch, you know, and if you, and start out slow, like start out with your, have a glass of water at dinner, or a glass of water before dinner, you know, a cup. Of, you, you know what would be a good thing to start is get a couple of crystals of the uh, mineral salt and then get a copper cup, get a glass of water and then uh, drink that before dinner. And I bet you it would probably uh, end up making people eat less too. It, uh, it will just, it will, it will like, um, Fill some of the space that you're trying to fill. And I don't mean just your stomach space. I'm talking about the nutritional space, but your body is trying to get, give it some of that and then back it up with the food and then see, you know, because I bet you there would be a lot where you'd be like, oh, I don't even really want to eat all this or something, you know, because your body is like, I'm, I'm satisfied. I'm good. 
because so many people overeat because your body, they feel like their, their body's in starvation mode and they don't know what to do. And so, you know, this is where we start slowing down and start figuring out for ourselves and start seeing. And then there's more. There's more uh, minerals. Like that one woman who was talking to me, she just had horses and she got their salt lick. And so she just thought, hmm, I'm going to scrape some of their salt lick off and I'm going to use those minerals, that salt for me. And her hair turned, her hair turned back just off of taking the selenium. So, and, and we're all short in all different things, but we have to figure it out for ourselves and find out. And that's the thing when I'm talking about where I have all these different people, you know, they'll start asking me or something. It's like, just because I can figure it out for me doesn't mean I can figure it out like through the phone. Like you have to try things. You have to see, like, you'll be able to tell. Like if you drink too much copper, you'll feel like, oh God, I don't feel good. And, um, you know, and all these different things, your body will tell you. But you got to learn how to read the, the signs, just like, you know, with the universe. The universe is always talking to you, too. But you got to learn how to read the signs. You got to learn how to listen, to be a part of the communication, to be a part of that aspect of the game, to play the game on their level. That is the big level up. This is, we are leveling up. And that is the level up. You are going into a whole nother level. It's like you're trying to listen. You're watching the signs. You're processing it's like a whole, a whole thing, you know, and I think it's going to keep going, you know, and, and people who are lost, they're going to just feel like, what the fuck is happening? And so the more that we all keep spreading awareness about, you know, this is an internal journey to self, you know, the, uh, the spiritual journey really is a journey to home. It's a journey back to you. Just like this desperation in me trying to get back to the self of me that I hid from, that I tried to hide, that I was ashamed of. And you know what's also wild? Because I keep getting this view or this picture. You know, like I said, they play out these pictures over and over and over. And I had this dress that I'd gotten. And it was um, it was when I was in nursing school. And it was, I had already, I had told my husband I was going to go to nursing school to leave him. Like I, I told him all this like years in advance. I didn't sneak up on him with this. I kept saying, if things don't change, I'm going to go to school, make a job and I'm going to leave. I can't live like this. And then by the time I was in school, I was like, okay, I'm going to leave. I can't live like this. And then, um, so anyways, I was saying it the whole time, even though, you know, sometimes people don't listen. And so I, um. Uh, and I was really finding myself too in nursing school, you know, because I was being so strangulated in who I was as a person in the home. So then going out was like getting to see myself through other people. But then there was a lot of like, you know, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of girls who are just as toxic friends or you can be just as toxic. So, um, anyways, I had this dress and it was, um, I could see it perfectly and I would wear it. Like when we would go out after we would have a big test, all these people in class, we'd all go out and go dancing. It was like a really, uh, happening club scene at the time. And so we would all go out together as this group and stuff. And I wore this dress. I'm sure that's why I got the dress. I probably got a Ross for like six ninety nine or something. And I thought it was really cute. You know, I didn't have a lot of money. And, um, uh, so I wear it and then I kept thinking, you know, oh, it just doesn't look good because I don't have, um, you know, any boobs. And so I kept thinking like it didn't look good, but now I keep seeing it and I don't even know if I even wore it. Like I, I probably tried it on. It probably didn't fit anymore. And, uh, but anyways, in the postcard that they keep sending me, then I get to see both. And every time I prefer my original self. It's like, it's so weird when you can, you know, like our insecurities, it's best not to feed your insecurities. It's best to work on your insecurities and learn how to love yourself because it's very toxic in the direction it goes. And there's a lot of people that are doing things to themselves that I'm, you know, there's going to be serious complications. I can't even tell you how worried I am about this BBL thing. Like, I, it's like, oh, uh, it just makes me, very stressed about it thinking about like these girls going in and uh, doctors putting them on antibiotics and uh, you know because if you've got necrotic tissue and you that's not good 
Like, it's not good. Like, dying, to, and it makes sense. Like, it's, like, everything that is in you is there for a reason. And you just take out fat. Like, well, we don't like where it is right there. Let's redistribute it. But it doesn't go there. And so you put it there, then it, it doesn't go there. So it's like a pocket of um, necrotic tissue. It's becoming necrotic. So anyways, and that's going to be each person's own body. I would just like, I would be doing a detoxing, just the same things that I keep doing. You just got to keep doing detoxing, cleansing, and uh, try and get as clean as you can in your diet. And then use your mind and keep remembering, you know, you're not flesh and blood. Don't let them suck you into that state of being because that's where they fuck us. You got to get more into, you know, I'm fucking eternal, bitch. <laughs> like, uh, and, and, and there is more people who are figuring it out now, too. It's like, oh, I think that they were shortening our lives on purpose. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I think so. They told us so we could die. I don't think so. They I, There was a thing I just seen about the birthday song. Oh, Joe Rogan was doing this about the birthday song. And that it's creating a spell. And that how we all gather around in the dark, around candles and sing this song. Because it is a part of the process of getting you to age yourself. So, yeah. It's all, it's all a thing. It's all done on purpose. So, yeah. It's fake. It's all fake. So, anyways, but that's for everybody to figure out because it's not fake as long as you're running the program. As long as you believe it, it's real. You have to stop believing it. And then it's not real. But you have to get yourself to be able to get into that way of thinking. That you have to realize what's real and what's not real. And the more you connect to your spiritual self, your, your spiritual side, the side of you that's not real. Or, no, the side of you that isn't in the, that you don't see in the real world that it's, you sense it you feel it you converse with it uh, that's that part of yourself that the more that you get into that that's real you know it, it, your integrity who you are that's real that's why selling your soul and is so painful and um and then one thing too is like people just don't even realize like uh healing the, the things you've done to yourself is one level. But when you start healing the things you've done to other people, that's a whole nother level. And that is going to be really hard when people get into facing that. And I think that there's a lot of these people who are even like these love and light people. They're just hiding. They're hiding from the things that they need to face. They need to face it. Uh, you know, especially if you're going around acting like you're all spiritual and holier than thou. And then you're not even facing yourself. So... Anyways, you know, we've still got more to go on all of the things. Uh, and, I don't know. To me, it's just like I feel like the universe is, everything's going to be fine. Like, I don't feel like I need to worry about the house. I feel like that's a big message. Like, every time I think of it, I just get trust, trust, trust. It's like, yeah, but are you guys telling me I need a pack? Because I need to try. I'm like, what? And uh, so, I just feel like everything is going to work out like it's gonna start crashing like they're flooded I, and I don't know you know I mean anything can happen but I'm just gonna keep putting the energy towards you know uh, they've got themselves all in a bind they've created themselves and that they are gonna pull themselves down they're gonna crash it and it's already happened this was something I got a strong message last night when I was in bed that the light is already here it's already here you are either tapping into the light or you are focusing on the dark. And so the light, it takes you into the direction you want to go. The dark holds you back into places where you think that you're trapped. And so once you focus on the light, which the light is here, then everything that we are watching is a replay. All this is to show us. And so that's why, you know, we've been being poisoned for so fucking long. And then people start panicking like, oh my God, we're being poisoned. We've been, we've lived through this. This has been our lives. That's why we're all sick. That's why we've got issues and stuff. So that is why, you know, you start doing your healing and cleaning yourself up and all that. But they start panicking. It's like, but that's what you got to realize. No, this is showing. This is the exposing. This is so you see, so you understand what's been going on. But that is where you can start being in the light instead of being trapped in the dark is being able to 
um, to see and to trust, you know, and that's what I'm trying to do is uh, trust into the light. Like the lights here, I'm trying to ride that wave and be like, okay, the banks are going down. Like that's a for sure. And so I don't know. We'll see. But that's the, that's the, that's the waves I'm trying to ride on is, um, the waves of change, the waves of making a difference, making things go in a direction, changing the world into what we want it to be. And, and you know, you can do that in simple ways. Just, you know, talking to a doctor and standing up for yourself. Because that's another thing too right now. Is there even posting signs that you aren't allowed to ask your doctor questions. You're not allowed to, uh, to, um, to argue. And you aren't allowed to bring up anything that isn't already assigned that will be talked about. So well, there's all these restrictions. Well, of course, because it's corporation, corporations. That's all that is all is. You're a number. Doctors are paid employees. They are on a script. So yeah, that system's going down. It's falling apart because it's corrupt as fuck. There's nothing good about it, especially when you know they're depleting us of our health. And then trying to make us buy something that is also depleting us of our health. So, anyways, that is, um, you know, but all, all of those things are in the process of change. And I don't know, you know, how it's all going to exactly fit in together. But I feel like for sure that the, this will be a part of like how they'll be like, well, the banks went down and. Stories will be like, well, look at all the foreclosures. They were trying to take everybody's houses, so they crashed themselves. And, you know, that's what I think is how it will play out. Because greed and corruption, it's like a snake eating its own tail. It's There's no balance. There's no harmony. It's just eating its own tail because we, they would eat us alive. They would eat what feeds them. So... Uh, greed and corruption is just dark space of uh, entanglement. Uh, so anyways, we're breaking free from that. And then we're moving out of that and moving into something more positive and more blessed where things are more uh, better. But, but it's available. It's available now. So just as much as you can, start taking those little steps to trust and go in the direction of the light, even though it seems like, oh man, that's risky. They're saying this is a for sure, but that's risky. T try the risks, go with the risks because the universe, it, I, we'll see. I think there's gonna be, you know, the universe is going to repay the energy. The energy that the, is poured into them is gonna be poured back. And uh, like, it's so weird too when people are like, well, the, your, your energy and what you're putting out, you got to remember, you're going to pull in what you're putting out. It's like, you should have watched the next video check because I just pulled in exactly what. So anyways, but on this other level, if you can see what I'm saying, of where you're pulling in the energy. So you are pulling in an energy, but just not in the way that they try and explain it. So it is you are going in a direction and you know, there's two directions. You can go into the direction of doing what you're told, following the rules, being in the dark, being in the frustration, or you can go and go towards the light where it's going to be, you know, I can sit there and say that, but I know it's very frustrating and hard for people to even understand. So don't get too caught up in worrying about because everything's going to play out exactly right. It's not like you have to sit there and try and figure something out. Like if you ever feel like you're having to just try and figure it out and try and figure it out, because we don't, we don't have to try and figure it out. There's nothing that we need to figure out. The ride's going. We don't have to figure shit out. And so we just got to be along for the ride, be present be there, be, you know, partake in the ride because the ride is your, the benefit. The ride is where you learn and grow. But if you are distracted, then you're not being productive. So anyways, that's what I think. So, but you got to remember to love yourself, to love everyone and have a loving day. And I'll talk to you later.